Hello and welcome back to A Game of Thrones mod here in Crusader Kings 3. We are playing as Lord Samwell of Blackwood Vale here in the High Lordship of Blackwood Vale in the Riverlands under Paramount Kermit of the Tullys here. And if you missed the last couple of videos, no worries. Thank you so much for those of you who have been watching and subscribed to my channel. I've got over 50 subscribers now. It's a pretty big deal. So thank you very much. But House of the Dragon is over and I haven't played in a couple of weeks. So I'm going to catch up and catch you up as we go. Once again, we are playing in the A Dance of the Dragons timeline, the House of the Dragon series timeline. And we've written our own alternate history here from what happens in the books. Obviously, season two ended a couple of weeks ago at the time of recording and by the time you'll see this. And last time we actually had a part two of the Civil War. So King Aegon eventually won the war and we had Princess Rhaenyra of Dragonstone. Now, she lived, everybody was fine, everything was great, but here's the thing. She decided to have a second rebellion, a war for independence, and her and her compatriots have lost. They lost the war, she's in prison now. We're gonna find out what's gonna happen to her, hopefully, in this episode now, uh, now that King Aegon is in position to dispense justice. We'll see if he is as lenient as he was last time. Meanwhile, we're over here in the Riverlands, and as you can see, we have a feud with House Brackens. So the Brackens and the Blackwoods have a long-standing rivalry. In fact, in the books, uh, I believe I'm I'm dead at this point in history. So we're writing our own history. Uh, we have uh, Benji Cott Blackwood, uh, known as Bloody Ben, but in this timeline, he never had to grow up so fast and wage so many wars because the wars were over. And instead, Amos Bracken here is dead and his son Hoster is now in charge of Southstone. And if you look right over here, the ravishment, this, this should be ours. This should be belonging to us in our duchy. So what we're going to be looking at here is sticking it to our rivals in this episode and seeing if we can take back what is rightfully ours. Otherwise, we are scheming against this guy, Lucian Brooke, uh, because he is under Lord Raymond here. And why are we scheming against him? We're trying to get a hook on him so that we can recruit him into our schemes because his son, Jocelyn, is in line to inherit the titles of his house. However, his next in line to receive anything is Darna Malister and well she just happens to be marrying my son Lucas so in theory because it is a patrilineal marriage when if she inherits all of his titles then my dynasty will eventually essentially usurp his position and all of the Cape of Eagles and House Malister's possessions will fall into me which would be great because look at us we're so close together to merge all of these lands under one house you know, even if it's not directly controlled by my direct descendants, you know, it's still uh, a boon for House Blackwood. And the same goes for over in Lake Haven here. We've already successfully schemed our way into getting rid of his firstborn so that his uh, second daughter, who is marrying my direct heir, will inherit. And she's already had a daughter, Moira, we named her after her. And so when Benji Cott eventually takes over my titles, uh, his descendants, and her descendants will own both Blackwood Vale and the Lake Haven, essentially surrounding to crush our enemies in Southstone. So when we go to war here, we're gonna have to make sure that we look at our allies and we have a couple of allies. We've got uh, Lake Haven, we've got the Cape of Eagles, but we also have married into the Reeds. Right now, we only have an alliance with Howland Reed. He is a lord of a county, but his father is the high lord of all of the neck. So as soon as this guy passes away, and right now he's feeling fine, but as soon as he passes away, then our alliance is kind of gonna get an auto upgrade here where he's gonna now be in control of much more power and territory. So we could kind of wait around to see that happen and get more than a 500 troop ally. We'd have a six, that, pretty pretty significant difference in terms of strength of our allyship there but he's not our only ally we've got the him we got the other two that i already mentioned lake haven and cape of eagles and we also have 
Golden Grove down over here. This area is pretty rich and pretty powerful. And if we compare that to our rival here, well, they have one ally. They have the Willowwood uh, Dushy up over here. And, they, and they're pretty, pretty strong, but they're not nearly as strong as some of our other allies, like Lake Haven. They're about the same. Cape of Eagles, a little less. So we're way outmatching our enemy. And if we go to declare war, we can see our estimated strength is about three times as big. And what we could do is declare war to seize our de jure territory. I gain the contested title. I actually don't want the title myself. I would actually rather, yes, Lady Elena, she become my vassal because I see no reason to take the ravishment away from her and her family, House Gleaner here. We could just have her become our vassal as is rightfully supposed to be the case. So it only costs us 90 prestige. We got plenty of prestige. We're not going to be worried. We're going to call our allies in using prestige too. And let's just get it going because this is what this is going to be about today. Today we are going to stick it to our rivals and take back what belongs to us. Declare war. And here's all our allies. We're going to call them in. 150 150. Oh, you won't accept? Excuse me? Is it because you don't like me very much? Well, that's very fine and good. Luckily, we've got some money. And I'm sure if I sent you a gift, you would appreciate me. Although, is it even worth it? Your 2,000 guys is not exactly going to make a big difference. In fact, I don't even think I need to spend the prestige to call in these other guys. Even 75%. I don't even need your 500 guys. I do need your 5,000 guys, though. So I'm going to waste not waste the money. I'm going to spend the 150 on this guy and not worry about Lake Haven coming in. Although that does remind me, I um, don't have a sway scheme or any personal scheme going on right now. So I might as well just sway you and increase your opinion. If you if I got your opinion up I'll just even just a little bit, you would come to my aid. So. Well, you might as well work on that, and in due time, you'll join in the battle, and then we'll squeeze them out and take them down. The very first thing I'm going to do is make sure my armies raise up nice and big, raise all. And as soon as they finish gathering, they're going to jump down here and take over this land. Meanwhile, the Brackens, they're going to have to come all the way around the river around River Run to get over to me. So I'm going to have the jump start and I'm going to get the ravishment siege down and under my possession and start increasing my war score. If you see here, I've got some mangonels to help me do that and our special shadows of Raven Tree Archer special unit, which are pretty darn strong. I'm pretty impressed with uh, 104 attack. So we're going to rely on those guys to help us win this along with our allies. And let's get going. Uh, here we are, our ally from Golden Grove are willing to join our war. Their units alone are probably going to win this battle, this entire fight for us. So there we are, the Cape of Eagles. The nice thing about the Cape of Eagles is they're pretty close. Hopefully they're going to pop down their guys right down here at the Hammerford to rally. And then meanwhile, the Brackens are coming up to meet us. So they actually have a bit more troops than we do because, well, frankly, they're benefiting on off the territory, which belongs to us. So maybe after this war is done and once we own this uh, rightful piece of our land, we'll be a little bit more evenly matched next time. So I'm going to just hope that my allies come down and help me out real quick before this battle gets underway. And it looks like they might make it, sort of. I'm not sure where this guy's going. If he's coming to get me, I'm not sure if we're gonna finish the fight in time. So let's see how this goes. Yeah, looks like we would be a losing. I can try to run away, but it looks like they're already gonna get me. So let's just hope these Malisters get down here nice and quick. Yes, and they did. And like I said, look at these, uh, the Willow Wood. They had to come all the way down through the Trident's Mouth over the uh, Riverbend Rivers here, and then all the way up along the river and around River Run to get in to fight me. Meanwhile, my ally was already on the correct side of the river Trident, so we got this in the bag. They came to our aid, and these guys are going to be way too slow. And hopefully that just means we're going to finish the fight 
before they join and then kick their butt immediately after. Oh, no, they joined the fight too, just to get their butts kicked by us. And this battle is finished. These guys are toast. Oh, and some, uh, where are you guys? Look at the after battle report. Oh, some spies. Okay, let's see. Wyman. He is in Lord Lionel's court. So I forgot to tell you all about the High Towers. You might remember the High Towers from the Game of Thrones show, uh, House of the Dragon. Uh, Ormond was the, the main leader in the timeline, but uh, we also had, if I look through here, apart from Ormond, there's Otto. High Tower was the guy that you might be more familiar with from the show. He's still alive here in this timeline. He's a little bit older. There's a uh, pretty Alice in Hightower. She was married to King Viserys. She's the mother of the current king. And look, everybody's still alive. It's a totally different timeline. Anyway, so what's going on with the Hightowers? Well, my sister, Black Alley, was married to Garment Hightower. And Garment Hightower is the second son of the previous Lord Ormond, so the brother of the current Lord, Lionel. And if we take a look at the succession here, unfortunately, he's already had a kid, and then he's got another daughter. But after that, we got... Oh. Sorry, my bad. He's the third son, so we're actually pretty far away from inheriting the titles. We got uh, Martin to get rid of and all of his kids that he might have, plus the current lord. So maybe sooner or later, eventually, Garmond would inherit. And the thing is, we married Black Alley to Garmond uh, matrilineally so that, you know, our children's, our dynasty's children would inherit. So if he never does get titles, then it falls under us. Just another sneaky scheme Crusader Kings 3 style that might bear fruit eventually if we can find the time between all of our other schemes. Meanwhile, if you're curious what's going on over here, the Westerlands are defending against the Liberty War, so their vassals have driven up against them, probably because somebody tried to get arrested and they didn't like that, and so now they're rebelling for maybe overthrowing their lord. We'll see how that turns out. Princess Rainier is still in, in jail. Nothing's happened yet. She's been denounced, though. And she's a milk of the poppy addict. She's not having a good time. She's the social pariah. Yeah, she's uh, pregnant in jail. So, and there we go, winning the war as the Golden Tooth comes up and backs us up. We don't even need these guys. We are going to destroy these people. And I forgot I moved these guys. So they're gonna move back and help siege this down now. Meanwhile, the Golden Tooth Bay is just taking care of business, wrecking our rivals, the Brackens. Oh, here we are back in a battle. Looks like Willowwood tried to come in for a second round, but Malister and me taking care of business. Meanwhile, the Golden Tooth down here, sieging down Iron Hedge. Oh. Another battle won, just in time for the Brackens to get defeated, run around, and try to fight me again on their own terms, just to get wrecked by me and Malastair one more time, and we're already at 50% war score winning this fight here. Golden Tooth, you didn't even have to come back me up, I already had this in the bag, but I appreciate the fact that you decided to come in here. Now he's going to go chase down the last of the Willowwood troops, wipe them out altogether. We completely stack wiped the Bracken troops, so we are in a good position here. The feud, a heavy toll. Vengeance is far from being served on House Bracken. Since our feud began, there have only been further outrages by Lord Hoster and his clutch of vipers. Sometimes I wonder if we have underestimated our enemies, and it would not be better to cut our losses before it's too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no freaking way, okay? We'll show them. I only gained two stress because that wasn't even a hard decision. I mean, keeping up a feud might be stressful, but in our case, we relish our destruction of our enemies. These Brackens must pay for all of their outrages over all of the hundreds of years that this feud has been raging between our two families. I will never give up the feud. I will, however, find a new Castellan to do something. Oh my, Lord Anger of Waspud, uh, you are an amazing diplomat. Why are you not in charge? of my chancellorship here. In fact, I 
think I'm going to reassign my Chancellor as my Castellan, and instead, I'm going to assign you to be my Chancellor. And yeah, you're going to do your good job. Meanwhile, my Castellan, I'm going to tell him to oversee the realm and give me, uh, per preside over the council. I'm busy with war, and this also earns us renown. Renown is a stat that gets us more perks for our dynasty, and we are all about family here at House Blackwood. We are investing into our dynastic legacies, specifically the Blackwood specific dynastic legacies that are available in the more house flavor mod that we are using in the game if you want to see the mods just go back to the first episode i i show them all off there but this one gives us some unique things specifically only for house blackwood also there's the riverlander specific stuff because of our culture and then you know all the rest of the regular things that are in the regular game so no worries about that but so far, just to go over, we've got Never Forgive because we are more likely to become vengeful because we'll never forgive those Brackens. Like I said, this house feud is not being given up on until there are no more Brackens left. Meanwhile, we picked up uh, the other last time, I think, Black Raven Green Dreams. We are more likely to get the green site because our house, our house is pretty cool. So I've been kind of, you know, not reading up. I've been watching YouTube videos on House Bracken, and uh, there's a great a couple ones on YouTube you can see. And anyway, I don't want to get into all of their history and stuff because you can watch like the the history videos. I, I'll just leave it as no spoilers. But anyway, we're a pretty cool house, and we got a lot of ooh spooky magic. Green sight is like the visions like Bran has in the original Game of Thrones show, you know, that kind of thing. So it's it's cool. Uh, Jojen Reed in the in the first one had the green sight. So we're more likely to get that on one of our characters because our house is just cool like that. Uh, Never Forget is going to be our next one in the line here. Our house words as the Blackwoods, I don't think there's actually a real known words because honestly house words are kind of like an handle thing and whatever so never forgive never forget is what they put into the game for them because everybody's got to have house words in the game anyway and i think that's really appropriate so we never forgive we never forget we hold on to the old ways we are the only house in the entire area that's down this far south that still believes in the old gods because we're not willing to give up our history right we don't forget we honor our oaths like all good first men houses do we take that kind of stuff seriously and a betrayal like that of the brackens will forever earn our ire so we got rid of willow uh willow wood over there and now they have nobody they got zero troops we can continue to sway lord ambrose we don't need you to join the war here anymore anyway but uh so it's not worth it to send him gold to make his opinion better of me we'll just slowly chip away at him over time so that he has a better favor of us s later on you know no big deal in fact uh kermit doesn't like us for much obviously strong believers old gods hostile basically nobody likes us around here by default just because we're not going to be willing to go with the grain and follow the faith of the seven we're going to do our own thing in fact oh an acclaimed knight sir elton actually this is my half bro oh lord ambrose just died so oh that means there it is, Lady Moira of Lake Haven, Benjikot's wife, has officially taken control of Lake Haven, which means that when she passes away, our granddaughter and current heir's heir is going to inherit. If he and her have another child, like if they have a son, then he would inherit because of the way the rules work uh, for inheritance right now. But at the moment, Moira is the uh, a presumed heir. So, if something happens to her, and, well, I don't want to kill my own granddaughter, but it would be nice if they might have a son just to make sure that we're locked down. Because if she dies, and then he has to marry somebody else, and he has another kid, not that he's necessarily that likely to be interested in copulating with a new wife, but, you know, if we find another good marriage for him, it'd be nice to maybe have a couple more cool kids. Primogenitor kind of just means you're the more children you have, the more allies you can make at this point. So 
might as well try to pop out a couple more if they can. Anyway, Lake Haven will soon be ours in our dynasty, and in the meantime, oh, looks like we had a couple more Bracken troops came back, but they are no match for the Malisters, and we are going to come in and back these guys up as we come around to finish off our opponents here. We have successfully claimed the ravishment for ourselves, and it's only a matter of time now before the Brackens give up altogether and surrender it to us, which is, again, rightfully ours. Meanwhile, the espionage murder, while attempting uh, to perform his duties, my spy master has uncovered a secret held by Lord Owen of Whisper Point. Lord Owen is Lord Lionel's spy master. This is huge because any scheme that we might want to take against Lord Lionel in his court is going to be insanely helped by having his spy master on board. So it seems that he plotted and twisted to murder Maester Glendon. So now that we have a, a potential hook, we know about his murder secret, we can blackmail him into getting a hook on him. And if he accepts, which it looks like he's predict predicted that he will, we're going to have the hook that we need in order to make a scheme, maybe even murder Lord Lionel here before he can pop out any more kids and, you know, put more people in the way of our line of succession all the way down to third brother Garment here. So we'll see about that. There it is. He accepted immediately. Now you are mine. And as soon as five months pass and we manage to fabricate a hook on this guy, I think we will... Oh, this guy's infirm. And he's just his courtier. He's not even his spy master anymore. You know what? I don't even, I don't even care about you, dude. I'm just going to give up on that right away. Meanwhile, my troops are going to come around here, start sieging down Iron Hedge to make these Brackens give up once they realize that it's fruitless to fight against me anymore. They're going to give up the ravishment. And meanwhile, I'm going to take advantage of my new spy master hook and immediately start to scheme against Lord Lionel here. And I would like to see him dead. 71% off the bat, and that's without my spy master helping to support my schemes or anything. I could probably boot that up pretty high, but I'm going to let him continue to look for secrets because... Well, you never know. This, As we just saw with the Malisters, your Spy Master is not guaranteed to stay your Spy Master. So here he is. He absolutely refuses to help. But if we use our hook, uh, it's only one tick. It's because he's terrified of him. Wow. Okay, so we are going to have zero help involved here. We don't have the money right now to support it. We bribed... Uh, some the Malisters into coming help us, which I think was worth it. But yeah, this guy's never going to join our scheme, at least not against Lord Lionel, because his dread is, I guess, high enough. He's just, this guy's kind of a coward. Yeah, he's craven, so he's never going to join in uh, in a scheme against his lord, so long as his lord is still living. So hopefully, once we get rid of this guy, if we can get rid of him and his son takes over, he's not going to be scared too scared anymore of helping me get rid of a kid. So we can actually save our hook for a little bit later, and instead I will reassign my spy master to support my schemes, because he just found a secret. He's not going to find another one for at least five months. It's the perfect time to have him switch tasks. Also, he kind of doesn't like me very much. It's because he's a Faith of the Seven. I wonder, can I make you convert? It'd be nice. No. Oh yeah, uh, something I was saying earlier was I forgot that, that I said in a previous episode oh, I should try to make my kids knights, but I kind of realized that like knighthood in general, I think, is sort of a Faith of the Seven and all concept anyways. And we're first men, we're the old gods, that's probably where, why we're not in the whole knighthood line of business at the moment. So no worries on that. We're going to stick with our zealous nature and keep the old gods traditions, which we don't need to worry about uh, all of their fancy titles and knighthoods and such. Also, I should look for a new personal scheme to make. You know what? I think I'll just sway my spy master so he likes me a little bit more. If he likes me, he's less likely to get involved in 
being recruited in one of these kinds of schemes, like a murder scheme, we always have to watch our backs against Bracken threat. So our rival Hoster might be scheming to murder us as we speak, and I don't want my spy master helping out in that scenario. These guys coming around to help. Yeah, I think I think this will be done before they finish sieging. So no worries. It's nice that you're here to back me up, guys. There we go, 83%. I'm gonna go straight to Stonehenge and siege down their capital house. That'll, that'll teach them. Once I uh, burn and pillage their, their castle, their house here of Stonehenge, they're going to be begging to give up this war to me. And hopefully, if I'm lucky, during the siege, I might even kill a couple of them. Now that my spy master is supporting the effort, oh, look. A couple of people will join. 83% is much better. His maester is easily going to join, and it only takes 61 gold. I can afford it. I'm not too worried. Let's kind of like get this on lock. As soon as this goes up to 95, it's it's only a matter of time. This eight months away, I think I'm going to get him. Meanwhile, a dangerous faction wants to lower the crown authority. These guys used to not be able to join the Liberty War. I think that has finally run out. My liege put a stop to that, but now... Oh, look, you got some guys back. Oh, isn't that cute? You think you're gonna stop me with those 200 guys? Even your thousand guy backup coming from Willowwood again. It's not gonna matter. Oh, you're just gonna sneak around. Well, my allies are gonna take care of you. No worries, you're done. Meanwhile, apparently Sarah spit in my son Balian's food during a dinner a few nights ago. One of the cooks came upon Balian spitting in Sarah's food in secret. That explains why Sarah has been looking a bit green during dinner the last few times. He must have been spitting in Sarah's food for days, the little sneak. Well, I think that's just what Sarah deserves. Balian will keep the deceitful trait a good trait to have my son. I'm training him up. He's my ward right now, and I want him to be deceitful. I want him to be callous. Being patient is very good for more hostile schemes. He will become a great spy master someday, which is the childhood focus that I'm training him in. Being just, that was a mistake. That's not going to help him out. But I like to think of it as serving justice on our enemies, because he's going to try to help me take down the Brackens one day. He will probably become, if all goes well, maybe my son and heir's spy master when he grows up, if he if he masters his traits. So we'll see how he turns out. He's 14 already. We've got two more years to finish training him. Meanwhile, these Brackens are toast. 96% just a matter of time. <gasps> the existence of my plot to murder Lord Lionel has been discovered? Excuse me? How dare you? my curses. That really puts a damper in my chances here. 75% negative, but I have a lot of good traits and we're about to get another one. So I'll show those off in three seconds once that happens. And there we are, a new trait. Uh, currently we're focusing on Skullduggery and we've been going down the schemer tree. So we've got a job done right, which increases our hostile scheme success chance and swift execution, which increases our murder success chance. So we're already doing pretty good. We're going to pick up digging for dirt to increase our chance of finding secrets. So we can find more secrets to get more hooks on people like the spy master down there. It's going to be great. So it's not quite as guaranteed as it was a few minutes ago. Now that we discovered the scheme, however, we still have a little bit over a 50-50 shot at getting this guy killed. So all we can do is cross our fingers and wait the five months to see if our scheme can be pulled off. I have no need to go kill these guys. We're just gonna win right away, right now anyway. I do, however, want to finish sieging down their castle. 38 days left. Even though I won, if I can squeeze out another 38 days and just teach them a lesson by burning down their house, I'd be I'd, I'd be pretty happy with that. I think that would be appropriate for these Brackens, just so that they, they really know they should never have taken their land from us. In fact, they should be our vassal, if not dead. And that's really the goal of this entire series. So, Blackwoods forever. Three, two, one, toast. Ah ha ha ha! Look at this, Lord Hoster was captured during my siege, in fact. So, why not? 
why not torture him? Because as soon as I win the war, he's going to be released. I think we should torture him first. Just wait another day or two. There we are. Mwah. These rats might seem shy, I say, as I strap the bucket to Hoster's exposed chest. But once it gets warm in there, they will do anything to escape. Luckily for them, their teeth are very sharp. He pleads for mercy as I reach for the glowing coals. Ah... I could listen to his screams for hours. He gains recently tortured for five years, which is a major health penalty, gains stress, and there's a 5% chance he just becomes a straight up lunatic from his torture here. And as much as I would like to simply win the war and release him as part of that, I think I would rather he simply burn at the stake. He will never need to know if he was stressed out or a lunatic because he will be dead. Let's burn him. I'm still 100% war score here, so I can still just win the war and enforce my demands. I gain legitimacy, I gain fame, I gain prestige. Uh, he will be giving up Lady Elena to uh, become our vassal and Poor little Stefan or Sef, Sefton of Southstone. What a stupid name, Sefton Bracken. Gross. So his son is now in charge of Southstone, and I still have his mother, my prisoner. She's from House Caron. She's not necessarily my enemy. She did nothing wrong except marry this guy. So I think I will simply ransom her back to her son uh, as much as. I would like to do more about that with her. Never let it be said that Samuel Blackwood is not merciful. I can disband my army and my rival, my new rival in a moment, as soon as this uh, time ticks over, says to the contemptuous Samuel, you child of a mangy dog, you are a much greater foe than I imagined. In order to put an end to this bloodshed, I will comply with your demands. Aha, I gained the contested county, and now you can see the ravishment here is my vassal. She does not like me one little bit. Uh, she is a zealous person of the Faith of the Seven, so obviously that is going to cause a lot of friction between us, but also luckily she is a flagellant and 51 already. She has frozen grief uh, from losing somebody, so I probably her uh, daughter who died of plague or something, looks like. Died in childbirth. So Davos here is set to inherit. He is also zealous, which is not going to be great for me, but he is lustful and paranoid and humble. Maybe he will come around once he takes over, but we'll see about that. And the important thing is, we did it. We won the fight, we killed our enemy, we took back what was rightfully ours, the de jour duchy of Blackwood Vale has been made whole, and our rivals have been taught a lesson. And in fact, there's just one less Bracken because we managed to not only burn down his house and raid it, but also take him captive and take him out, torture him in our prison, enjoy his screams, and then burn him at the stake in fire and blood. <laughs> Another win for House Blackwood in the long-standing rivalry, and let's just check it out. They only have 13 living members left. Well, 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 Lord Otho of High Heart has been jailed by my ally, Lord Raymond of the Cape of Eagles. I wonder, I can't do anything to him directly, but I hope that my rival might decide to execute him if, if he would do me that kindness. Bruce, Bruce has also been captured by my ally, uh, nobody else is in jail. Everybody else is uh, women and children. We've got a couple more guys uh, here. A bastard son, Lord Raylan Rivers, who's been given a barony. And then we got Lord Lothar of Old Wife. He's got a county, so he's still carrying on the legacy. He was one of the brothers of Amos, even. So he's he was the uncle of Hoster and... Uh, looks like Harris Bracken, the brother of Hoster, is still around too. So he's probably the heir after all of Hoster's children. So we still got a couple more Brackens to take care of. And 
that'll just have to be what we continue on with in further episodes. I think this is going to be just a shorter one, just kind of take things as they come, get things done. We've accomplished everything we set out to do, at least for now. And all we have to do is wait and see five more months whether Lord Lionel is going to be toast or not. So thank you so much for watching. If you aren't subscribed yet, that'd be great. This is a super small channel. It's brand new, but I'm trying this out and it seems like people are enjoying these Crusader Kings 3 videos. So thank you. I appreciate that. You know, drop the like and a comment. Let me know what you think and I'll see you next time. Hopefully. All right. Take care.